Each and every Pokemon game has different reasons to love them, but despite that, they're still the core Pokemon formula. From the very beginning until probably the end of time, you start at home with your mom, you venture out to choose your starter, collect all the gym badges, and become the champion. Each and every generation, there's Pikachu clones, pseudo legendaries, box art legendaries, the hot Pokemon, a new gimmick, and of course, a new evil team. The newest team, Team Star, is nowhere near the most loved team, and after looking into it, I think I've cracked the code as to why Team Star is actually the worst evil team in Pokemon. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well. And right off the bat, I want to say I enjoyed the Team Star storyline in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I thought for what it was, it was relatively well done. That said, I completely understand why some people don't like it. At the end of the day, they're just a bunch of kids who skipped school and modified their school uniforms and tried to recruit new members. Compared to the previous teams of summoning gods to recreate the universe at their will, I don't blame people if they feel a little bit underwhelmed. And while I get that, I think people who don't like Team Star are are looking at it the wrong way. To express my point though, let's take a look at all of the evil teams that came before and spoiler for basically every Pokemon game ever. <laughs> In a world where people befriend magical creatures and 10 year olds become the champion of the entire region, I'd say Team Rocket is the most realistic of evil teams. The overall goal can be summed up by two words. Profit, baby. They're known for stealing, selling, and exploiting Pokemon for their own personal gain with the end goal of running the world. Just the classic bad guy stuff, I guess. They've also been known to experiment on Pokemon and sometimes are even responsible for a Pokemon's death. Team Rocket was a phenomenal start to the evil teams since the world of Pokemon was still new to everyone at the time of their debut. They're evil, but in a way that was familiar in a sense, since a lot of what Team Rocket does mirrors real life crime. And while I feel like a new evil team could have been introduced in the following games, their inclusion in Gold and Silver wasn't strange and was a welcome addition. Team Magma and Team Aqua were the first dip into teams with more grand plans. In the original Ruby and Sapphire, their goals were to expand landmass and to expand bodies of water respectively. And in the remakes, Magma wanted to expand landmass specifically to progress human civilization, while Aqua wanted to wipe out humans so that Pokemon can live freely without human interference despite being humans themselves. <laughs> Were they going to wipe out everyone but themselves, or is joining Team Aqua just a suicide pact? This is also the start of the box art legendaries being more intertwined with the evil team's goals, which is a trend that occurs for the next three games. With Team Galactic, the evil team scale is pushed even farther, as their goal is to completely recreate the entire Pokemon universe. This is definitely the most outlandish goal of any evil team, but it's done in a way that both feels attainable for Galactic and doesn't feel ridiculous in the overall story. At this point, the power of certain Pokemon is well established, seeing that these games are the introduction of Pokemon that can control time and space, as well as God and Satan themselves. I think if this team was the very first evil team in the series, they might not be as well received, all things considered, but given the previous introductions of Magma and Aqua, this upscale and motivation made sense. And Team Plasma is by far the riskiest yet yeah, arguably the most effective evil team. For years, people have made jokes about making Pokemon fight for our amusement and whatnot, so making an evil team whose main goal is to liberate Pokemon from humans is a pretty baller move. It was incredibly bold, especially with the inclusion of N, who was ever really exposed to Pokemon who were abused by humans. And even after being revealed that it was all a front so Getsus could rule the world and be the only one of Pokemon, the Team Plasma storyline was an incredibly powerful one. Personally, I feel like their storyline was weakened in the sequels, but they were still an enjoyable part in Black and White 2 regardless. I think the best way to describe Team Flare is to just read their description on Bulbapedia. Their goal is to create a beautiful and better world while making money and eliminating everyone who does not follow their standards. I can make an entire separate video about X and Y since I think they're the least fleshed out games in the series, and this is only reflected in their evil team. So much so that when I was scripting this video, I not only remembered for the first time in a long time time that this team does in fact have admins, but I also realized I couldn't name a single one of them and completely forgot what each and every one of them looked like. And even after scripting this video, trying to remember what they look like, I, I just I just can't. I've already looked it up, but that knowledge has already left my brain. But regardless of personal opinion, it can't be denied that the things they do are in fact 
bad. Even if I think their motives are weak and unoriginal, they still follow the trend of previous games of wanting to change the world to suit their own vision. If we exclude Team Star, there are two more evil teams to talk about, but they're both notably very different from past evil teams. And that's mostly due to the classic Pokemon formula being shaken up from this point on. Prior to Sun and Moon, the main threat to each game were the evil teams themselves. From here on out though, there's the inclusion of the evil teams and the quote-unquote real threat, starting with the Aether Foundation. This isn't about them though, we're talking about the classic evil teams. Team Skull is so unbelievably different from every other evil team because their only goals are just to cause a bit of mischief. They're not mobsters, they don't have a god complex, they aren't looking to change the face of the earth or reshape the universe. They're just people who feel like misfits and want a place to belong. Things are a bit different after Guzma gets involved with Lusamine, but they do things that warrant needing to be stopped while being completely unserious. Given the classic Pokemon formula that was followed closely for so long and how prominent evil teams have become in Pokemon, this was a very risky move to make. And it worked! I remember when Sun and Moon came out and Team Skull was very well received, and they're still to this day my personal favorite evil team. As much as I love Pokemon, the games are pretty predictable and repetitive, and this was such a breath of fresh air and their reception wasn't missed from the Pokemon company. And in my personal opinion, this is exactly what led to Team Yell. To put it simply, Team Yell is boring. As Marnie's personal fan club, they want to see her win the gym challenge by any means necessary. The only thing they do is prevent people from participating in the gym challenge, and their leader peers didn't even tell them to do that. They're as unserious as Team Skull, but a million times less charming. There could have been some intrigue if Marnie was a jerk or was close with Team Yell or something, but she's just a nice girl who doesn't even really like Team Yell to begin with. And having a gym leader be the head of an evil team could have been a fun twist that no one would have seen coming and definitely hasn't been done before, but it completely fell flat since Piers is so disconnected from the rest of Team Yell during most of the game. He wasn't even the one who told Team Yell to do the things they did, and as cool as Piers is as a character, his role as Team Yell's leader feels bland and unnecessary. And it's such a shame that he has to be associated with the worst evil team. Wait, the worst evil team? If I think Team Yell is the worst evil team, what's the point of this entire video? It's called Why Team Star is the Worst Evil Team, but we've only barely mentioned them. So I think it's time we actually talk about the topic of this video. <laughs> Team Star is a group of students who allegedly bully other students. In reality, the closest we ever see to this is members of Team Star trying to pressure other students into joining them. Not cool, but not exactly bullying. At least I wouldn't call it that. After going through each of the Team Star bases, you eventually find out that the Team Star bosses were actually the ones being bullied, and the school did nothing to help them. I'm not sure if it was out of denial or if it just wasn't being taken seriously, but regardless, it resulted in the members of Team Star confronting their bullies. And because of this confrontation, Team Star's bullies dropped out of the school. The school didn't like that they caused other students to drop out, but Penny insisted on taking full responsibility for what happened. The director before Clavel agreed, and the deputy director erased all records of what happened because of course he did. <laughs> Eventually, all faculty members who worked at the academy at this time either resigned or were fired, and all of the staff you see in the game have only been working at the academy for a short time including Director Clavel. So, why is Team Star the worst evil team? The answer is incredibly simple because Team Star isn't an evil team. The worst thing they've done as a group is pressure other students into joining, and that's about it. Other than like skipping classes and such, which definitely isn't favorable behavior, but it's pretty typical teenage behavior to be honest. They were victims of bullying who stood up for themselves, then were villainized for it. And I think for what it is, it was really great. Ever since it was revealed that Scarlet and Violet would be featured in a school setting, it was pretty obvious that one of the three storylines would be centered around bullying, and the decision to make it center around the evil team without making the team themselves the bullies was such a good decision. Truth be told, minus the giant cars, battle royales, money laundering, and creatures wearing sparkly hats, the story of Team Star is something that happens a lot in the real world. A school handles bullying poorly, if they handle it at all, and then when the victims defend themselves, more often than not, they're the ones punished. There are too many stories like this to count, so much so that I'm sure a good number of people watch 
watching this video could share their own experiences like this. Something I remember from school was having an anti-bullying assembly every single year, and the same advice that was given over and over and over again was tell an adult. In reality, it didn't matter how many assemblies they had, how many school counselors they hired, how many anonymous tip boxes they had to report things, or anything else schools try. Time and time again, the adults kids are told to talk to about bullying are the very same adults who don't do a thing about it. And it would have been so easy for the Pokemon company to lean into the tell a trusted adult they know what's best and school is here to help, but they didn't. And that's what makes the Team Star storyline so good. Adults failing to help kids, even sometimes covering up their own mistakes to save their own asses, happens. A lot, in fact. And considering Pokemon is a family-friendly game that who knows how many kids play, including this in a school setting wasn't a question in my opinion, and I think they did it in a very cool way. Team Star is the worst evil team because they're only an evil team by name and association. These are the first games that don't really have an evil team. They just have a team. Each team we talked about before needed to be stopped because whether it's wanting to liberate Pokemon, reshaping the universe, or even just doing petty crimes, they're all doing bad things. Even Team Yell, who I think was the weakest part of Sword and Shield, still felt like bad guys. The quote-unquote evil team has been a part of the classic Pokemon formula since the very beginning, but lately, each new main series game that comes out shakes up the formula more and more. I can understand if someone thinks the boss battles are repetitive, and I personally feel like the battle royale sections are easy and boring, but the writing of Team Star is something I will always defend, even if Penny admitted to a felony. I'd like to give a quick thank you to all of my patrons for helping making this video possible, especially my tiers 3 and 4 members. Big shout out to the Jewels, Sammy Bear 127 The Tiny Artist, Nyoko Arts, Sage Rosado, Isla, It's Dorky Arts, Castle Rudel, Anna, Hikaru, Jamie, Jadios, Creatively Anxious, Dazzy Bones, Michael Sasha Rose, Red Boots the Time Traveler, Lauka 2, Clementine Jam, Lovely Siren, Jay Johnson, Vivi Martin, Bread, Fantastic Artist, Newly D, Joss, Planting Houses, Ravern, Gravity Drop, Blue, Blue Devil 4, Shari Amy, Sunset Lemonade, Corvid Dom, Kyron, Leia, Tina K, Donna Fangirl, Oswin, Sammy the Boy Draws, Kaden, Anime Fan 110, Tara Rose, 2551, Yui Naman, X Damaged Coda, Deanna Riano, Yudo, Danny Wanny, Boo, T Brown, Lex, Snapdragon Fern, Nest Bones, Gart 05, Echo, Dust Nook Arts, Pandora, Nishi Studios, Star Sailor, Zucchini Bread, Sky Kent Game, Fog Scorpio, Tobias Busby, Madison Mayer, Freddy Cox, and Amorix. Thank you all so much for the extra support, it means a lot to me. And if you're interested in becoming a part of my Patreon, you can find the link in the description box below. Hello and Happy New Year! I meant for this video to come out much sooner, but I recorded the audio and despite fixing the settings on my mic or so I thought, my microphone decided it wanted to be all blown out. And that was an issue I was having recently and I was like, cool I fixed it, but it turns out I didn't fix it so I had to re-record this entire video. I hope you appreciate it. But anyways, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts about Team Star down below. I would definitely like to hear them. I have no idea what my next video is going to be, but I will hopefully see See you there. <laughs> Bye.